Welcome to The Essential Element, the Elements of Education podcast. I'm Christian Page. Uh, I'm grateful that you tuned in. Uh, you could have been anywhere else in the world, but you're choosing to be here. Uh, and it lets me know that you're on mission with what it is that we're trying to do. Our school, we really believe in like relationships and that is emphasized through a mentor group and so. It's such a powerful experience to see the four year cycle and see how students change and grow and. It's a time of great personal growth and exploration. I'm always thinking about like this human capacity for change and growth and like personal development. You gotta go slow to go fast. Hmm. That unless you have that relationship with the kid, it doesn't matter. Like I could talk about transcription and translation for days, but if they're not bought in and into the class, like it just doesn't go over their heads, right? I believe education should be at the core. I think it should be one to inspire students, but also to help them build confidence. And I also just tell them, you're going to screw up a lot and you can change. And that's totally fine too. And that's what I want to give them is like, you get to make the decision for yourself. And the decision you make is not going to be wrong. Even if later on you wish you had done something else, it's still the decision you need to make at that moment in your life. I feel like our role, um, you know, as educators in general, but me specifically as a social worker, is just to create the space, to allow it to be a safe place to s say things, to make mistakes, to like have an idea that I don't hold on to forever, but right now I'm interested in exploring it. It gives them so much, I've seen it give them so much confidence, like even if they're not a student that like speaks up very much. I've seen students that have come in their freshman year, barely talking to anyone, and then their senior year, they're leading circles in their mentor group. Because I don't think I can really be a good mentor if I don't know what happens to them afterward. Because I don't know what, what real questions or needs they have in mentor group, what's really helpful unless they tell stories to me later. I always feel a little bit weird about it sometimes because they, they're they looking at me and they're like, well, I didn't go into science. I'm like, D I don't care. What, what are you doing? What are you like, <laughs> are you enjoying life? Like, do you have a good life? You got a kid now? Oh, that's awesome. Don't worry about your kid, right? Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Welcome. Um, I'm going to ask if you all could just move forward a little bit. I know it's kind of scary being towards the front of the stage. Um, so my name is Zach. I'm one of the co-directors here with Soda, Sammy, and Idea. Um, I'm going to ask the other co-directors to come up on stage and join me up here. Um, while they make their way up here, I'll tell you a little bit about what to expect from tonight. So this is our first ever family and community engagement night for the three schools. Um, our hope is over time, this becomes kind of a regular occurrence because we believe uh, in community. We believe in, in, in bringing people together and sharing the resources that we have and the opportunities that we have and that we are stronger if we work together as a team. And we get to do that every day with your kids in school. And our hope is, is that we can learn how to do that with you. And we can learn how to form relationships with our parents and learn how um, together we can make a really strong educational experience for all of you and for your students. So. Um, I'm going to welcome up the co-directors here. We have Bliss and Aaron from Soda. And Brittany and Kainoa from Idea. And Liz and Joni from Sammy. So I'm super lucky to get to work with these amazing people and they are the ones that make the magic happen every day at the school and all of the teachers that you'll hear from tonight and that you've seen on the video. Um, we've had the opportunity this past year to start a podcast where we've talked to our mentors about what makes mentorship and relationships so important and how that's kind of the cornerstone of everything we do at the School of the Arts when we talk about visual and performing arts, 
in um, science and math, and we talk about um, the Science and Math Institute, and with design and engineering at the School of Industrial Design, Engineering, and Art. So our hope tonight is that you'll get to hear a little bit about some of, from some of our teachers about what makes that experience so special. Um, we have Christian Page here, who's been our um, host for the podcast and is Tacoma's Poet Laureate, um, just an incredible um, presence in our city in Tacoma. Um, I'll let him introduce the panelists. And then after tonight, I'm just going to tell you briefly about how you can get involved and as a parent and how you can help us achieve our mission of really changing public education to focus on student relationships. Um, and then we'll have a chance to break off um, and to meet um, some of uh, our instructors and staff at the schools um, informally and meet some of, hopefully you can connect with some other parents too at your school. So um, without further ado, here's Christian Page. All right, all right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Ooh, we might try that again because I thought like three people might have been excited. Uh, good evening, everyone. Ah, can you all do me a big favor? Um, will you give like a thunderous round of applause for the directors of these schools? Um, um, I'll tell you all a secret about me. I don't really like rules that much. Um, some people don't like me already, that's okay. Uh, what I'll offer to you though, um, is that I only have one rule for tonight. Is that okay? Is that all right? Yes? I'm waiting for like the room to say it. Okay, for sure, for sure. Uh, my one rule, right, is, is that we practice um, an idea of gratitude, that we practice a love for each other, right? Like to be in community, like the, the ending word of that is unity. Uh, and I think that there's something special about what's happening tonight. Um, we all get the opportunity to be in the same room. The individuals that I'm getting ready to introduce to you, um, not only do they have a lot of lived experience giving and serving in the education um, sector, but they've also taught through and lived through, I think, one of the most difficult times in education. Right? Can we agree? Is that all right? Yeah. All right. Now, there's no plan B, so I'm hoping you all agree. Uh, so when I ask, like, I I'm going to introduce three folks to you. They come from three of the different schools that are part of the elements of education. Um, as they come up, like, can we, can we really celebrate them? Can we clap for them? Is that fair? Yeah. All right. I'm, I was hoping y'all didn't say no, because that was going to be tough. Um, but I want to uh, introduce you to our first panelist. Um, our first panelist is Alexa Folsom Hill. Um, <laughs> any way that you'd like to. Yeah. Um, Alexa has taught for 16 years, um, currently finds herself as the career counselor and working in student internships at SAMI. Um, Alexa is a gem to the community, and our next uh, panelist is going to be Emily Wickman. <laughs> this is a school event, you're getting like a B plus right now. Right, I'm, I'm aiming for A plus territory, but I appreciate it. Uh, Emily has, uh, she's the choral teacher. Uh, she's taught in the elementary schools for 14 years and currently finds herself at Soda. Uh, yeah, awesome, oh, come on, right? Uh, extra credit for my friend in the corner. Uh, uh, and our last individual is Johnny Devine. And so Johnny um, has taught for 17 years uh, and currently finds himself teaching engineering um, at IDEA. And so these are our panelists tonight. These are our three individuals who are going to be sharing some ideas with us. We're going to ask some important questions. Uh, and I want you all to know that like what you're going to experience tonight in education is not normal. <laughs> and I mean that in the best way possible. I think when you spend your time in element schools that you start to normalize some things that are not normal. Um, I don't know that I've been to a place, and I go to a lot of schools, been in a lot of places, uh, that prioritizes relationship and mentorship the way that the element schools do. And so we want to put a little bit of that on showcase tonight, uh, talk to you a bit about what happens in this space, um, and get the chance to know that our panel is better. Um, are you all going to be standing? No. All right, I just want to make sure. I was going to match the crowd if that's what was happening. So I have a couple of questions for you all. Um, we'll let them popcorn in the way, however it feels the most natural. 
Um, but as we talked about, right, like relationship and mentorship existing at the center of everything that you do at the Elevent Schools, right? And so my first question for you um, is why is mentorship so important at your school? And as a teacher, have you seen mentor groups make a difference in the way that you teach kids? I'll start off, yeah. Uh, I think that one of the most important parts of the, the mentorship is that it's a level of consistency with an adult that's gonna be there for all four years for the student. Um, I think that in a lot of traditional high schools, you can feel like you're getting shuffled around eight periods a day and then it's all a whole new thing next semester and you do that for eight semesters in a row and don't really have an adult that knows you truly except maybe that one guidance counselor that you had a chance to talk to three times before you graduated. Uh, I think that what we do at Soda Sammy and Idea is a way for uh, a student to really have that person that's invested in that student's future and gets to know the family, meet with them twice a year through conferences and mediate between any challenges and successes. Um, so I'll begin with that. What do you guys think? So I... <clears throat> I love summer camp. Uh, as a kid, summer camp changed my life. And it was this place that was kind of like set apart and specifically engineered to um, bring people together to help them discover who they are and to see each other. And so I used to pretend that I was bringing my students before I taught at element schools, I would pretend to bring my students to camp. I would take them out and play with like the two trees outside my classroom and like string yarn between them and be like, this is a game but it's about our souls. And they'd be like, nice to meet you. And, and so we would do these things because I experienced all these things where like in college, we'd have a retreat and we would go apart and know who each other was. And then we could do the work. We did that in my student housing job. We did that for campus leadership. We did that for the choir. And I was like, what? that's how everything should start. And I used to do that. And then I found out that, that these schools do that. And I went, oh, yeah, because everything should start that way. And so right from the get-go, going the priority is to see each other as human beings and being in a place where that is the entire agenda. And then maybe we can learn some math because that like can't happen until this happens and this has to has to be step one. And so to me, the, the draw into this place is just like, that is the center priority. And that's, I was like, that's where I want to be because that's how everything should begin. I don't even know if I answered the question, but I got excited. <laughs> Building off a little bit more on the mentor group model, just for some kind of details, what Johnny was mentioning is that when a student comes in in the ninth grade, they're, they're assigned, they're given a, a mentor. At Samily, we call it your Samily. That's our little play on the game. And so over the course of the four years between that ninth grade and the graduation, that's your mentor. That's your mentees. Those are, that is your school family. And so we have the pleasure of seeing these students grow <laughs> from being little, little folks to people with paychecks walking across the stage going to college or going to some kind of special opportunity outside of school. And it's a really beautiful thing to be a part of as a teacher to see that actually happen, but it's also mixed grade level. So you got 12th graders, 11th graders, 10th graders, and 9th graders all co-mentoring each other. And that is a huge success and a big part of why I think that model is successful because the teachers have answers, but we don't have all those answers. And I think that there's a lot of shared wisdom in those groups, and it's, it's a really beautiful and safe place to, to get to know each other and to make sure you know everyone's name. You have to know everybody's name. It's really important, and that's where that happens, kind of at camp. But, yeah. Thanks, Christian. Yeah, for sure. Yo, can, can I ask a follow-up question here? Somebody's mad at me for going off script. Um, we have to shoot, because I think that that's so important, right? And I'm wondering, like, if you all have seen the value uh, – of, sh of that shared wisdom that you mentioned show up in your classrooms and how, right? I think it's important that there's an adult or an authority figure or somebody who's being able to teach and share, but I think that there is something extremely special in classrooms when you watch young people come alongside each other. Um, have you all had that experience in your mentor groups? What is, what is the value yes. of that? Um, <laughs> all of my classes are mixed age um, because I teach choir, right? So I never know what grade people are in. And one of the things I love about that, and I love that every student gets that in their mentor group, it isn't just in their elective spaces, um, is that ninth graders walk in and they look up like this. And the question they are asking, I mean, they're asking a lot of questions. Do you see me? What does it mean to be here? What's okay here and what's not? How is it here? And, and in everything they do, the upperclassmen are showing them this is how it is here. And so as a leadership developer to help those upperclassmen go, you are always teaching. What, what, what do you want to teach? 
Um, and they feel an elevated responsibility to go, this is how it is here. And the ninth graders go, oh, okay. And, and then, like, right, like, so, so culture development happens in this really beautiful and connected and efficient way that isn't like, I'm not going to tell you how it is here. It is how the students are. And so we put them together to show each other who we are and how we are. And, and I love that element of it. Yeah, and I'll say that translates really sweet into the actual like academic class. So I, one of the tools is, does anyone have this student in their mentor group? So you like in class can go through another student to connect with another student and it works. And next thing you know, there's an email in your inbox with the reason why yada, 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 or the paper gets passed through a kid through the mentor group. And it, it's just this slick system that feels really comfortable, but you, you kind of have to, you have to use it, right? You have to be willing to say, who's mentor group? And, and that's, it's, it's a gift as a teacher to be able to use those relationships outside of your classroom. Um, you introduced me as an engineering teacher, which is, uh, it's correct, but it's like science and math hidden inside of application and, you know, science and math, I get the question all the time from kids, where am I ever going to use this? Like, why do I need to know about, you know, uh, long division and, uh, Newtonian mechanics and that kind of stuff. I'm not going to use it in my future. And I got that pretty early in my career because I was super gung ho about, uh, you know, just teaching pure physics and hard mathematics. Um, and getting that question enough really got me to kind of shift my perspective of like, it's probably okay if they don't graduate remembering all of, you know, Newton's laws, but I, I really want to make sure they graduate with like these core citizenship skills of tenacity and how to mediate a conflict with a peer and how to communicate with people that are different from you. And those are so hard to like take the time within an academic class period to carve out those skills and practice them intentionally. And I feel that the things that we do in mentor group support all of that. Um, and doing some of the things as kind of school wide routines, like having community circles and uh, restorative justice, uh, if there's a conflict, since that's something that's happening in mentor group, we can use those skills in my academic classes as well. Um, so we do circle up and we have like opening circles to talk about how people feel about the engineering task at hand. Um, and because they know how to do that kind of community focused thing, it like ties right into the academic classes really well. Um, so yeah, that's has impacted my classes. Johnny, I love you naming those things as skills, right? And I think sometimes those things get overlooked. Can I talk spicy to the audience for like a quick second? Can I kick down the fourth wall, um, right? Like there's this idea of like soft skills, right? That I think are actually essential skills. Um, and I think one of my favorite things about uh, the mentor framework or right, like it's not just an adult in the room hanging out with <laughs> a group of young people, right? There, there's, there's outcomes that we're hoping to get to. There are really four walls that hold that together. And so my next question uh, to be able to showcase some of that work, right? Is uh, the mentor group uh, student growth goals uh, at Soda Sammy and Idea are discovering yourself, developing your strengths, engaging your community, and navigating your future. So for those who are unfamiliar, those are the, fourth the four growth goals that exist there. My question to you all is which of these four goals do you connect with the most as a teacher and or a mentor? I help people navigate their futures. Uh, yeah, I really do. Um, I, as, as was mentioned in the introduction, um, I'm one of the Next Move internship coordinators. I, I work at SAMI. I run a classroom there in the fall. Uh, all of the juniors go through a series of essential skill building activities <laughs> that have relevance to their spring semester placement in the community as an intern. So um, we're towards the end of our semester now. We have almost 400 students placed all over the city with almost 200 businesses and community-based organizations doing the stuff they want to do. It's really cool. It's really cool. Um, but on the note of this mentorship and the relationships, it's what it's all about. I'm a confidence builder. That's, that's, my, that's what I try to do my darndest, and that is an essential skill. Can I walk in with the confidence that I need to make this happen for myself today? And um, yes, we can do reading, writing, and arithmetic, and yes, I have rubrics for resumes, and I have all the stuffs, but it's do you see yourself in this work and how can I help you do that more? And how do I get you connected to an individual in the community who's not a teacher? who wants to help you navigate to your future. And it's, it's sweet and it, it works great. And I hope that we get to continue to bring more of that into the mentor groups. And um, that's another place where that uh, different grade level stuff 
you know, the junior pops up and talks about their amazing internship, every single ninth and 10th grader is just like, oh my gosh, you know, or the, or the goods and the bads, right? They're really transparent and honest with each other because they create the safe environment. And um, it, it's just a really beautiful part of the work that we do, that the students get a home base and they get to leave. And mentoring is a big part of making sure they feel like they want to actually do that work. My favorite one's discovering yourself. And I always like, I feel like I get uh, credit for being like the campy feelings person where I'm like, and now let's sing about our feelings. And I'm like, I'll take that because now let's sing about our feelings. And, um, but the discovering yourself, like putting that on paper is like, this is one of the important outcomes of what we are doing here. I feel like my, my personal journey was I'm like, I'm gonna be a music teacher because my music teacher's life looks fun. So I would like to have that life. And she was like, good, sit down, take notes. I'll tell you the things. And then I had this crisis of like, what if I don't wanna do that job? And I learned that it, more important than what job do I wanna have was what work do I want to do? And when I discovered for myself that the work I wanna do is help to grow young people in community is to it, what I want them to get out of my class and choir is your voice is important and you matter here. And also it is not all about you because there are other voices in this room that are also important. And if they can, and most of them need one or the other of those messages more, right? Like some I'm like, yes, 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 yes. And some of them I'm like, hold on a minute. And I need that one. I need to like, Emily, shh, shh. but, but man, if they can walk out with those things in their hands. I'm like, that's the work I wanna do. And if they can sight read, cool, that's like a bonus skill, that's a hard music skill. But do you know that your voice matters? And do you know that other people's voices matter? That's about discovering yourself. That's about hearing and knowing who you are and about hearing and knowing who somebody else is and the like emotional work of that. We're doing that in Mentor Group, not just in choir. We're doing it, um, it you know, with personality inventories, with strengths builder and strengths finder stuff, with talking about how we respond to conflict and adversity and, and sharing uh, those situations and doing, you know, kind of case studies and practicing and, um, and, and the work of what they know about themselves at the end of that is going to get them a lot farther than, than the hard skills as much as we love to elevate the hard skills. <laughs> um, I've got, got some variation between the growth goals there, but I'm going to go back to the navigating the future. That's the one that resonates with me the most, um, not only in mentor group, but in my classrooms as well. Um, Practically, like we cycle through them in my mentor group week to week. We always pick a focus one and we'll do some activity related to that. Um, you know, the skill finders or uh, we'll play some games. We'll do a community circle uh, with those prompts. The reason I like the navigating your future one, though, I feel like it's kind of catches all the other ones to navigate your future successfully. You, you do have to know about yourself. You have to develop those strengths and you have to you know, find the communities that are going to help you be successful in reaching that um, next step that you plan. Um, I'm gonna share something that might get me canceled. It's not a popular opinion, but like teachers that say they teach because they really love kids, that's kind of a red flag for me. Like you love kids, like you wanna hang out with kids more than your peers and friends on the weekend. I don't know, that seems kind of weird to me. Um, and when people push me on it, I'm like, yeah, like I don't teach because I really like kids, but I think kids are really, really important. And that's why I teach. Um, and like their future, it's my future as well. So it's kind of selfish. Like I want to make sure that they're going to be successful and happy and productive um, because they're going to be part of my community. And I want to make sure they have those skills of um, being civically engaged and uh, how to deal with conflict. I love this. Um, spicy comment on the way. Prepare. I also like am, I don't have much fear of being canceled, but like on the way it might happen. Um, one of the things that that young people often say, right? And I, I think, and you all confer with me or tell me that I'm not telling the truth. Uh, we hear a lot of people in their philosophy. Um, we hear a lot of people say the way that they care about young people um, and one of the, or, or think that they're important. And one of the ways that young people approach me, right? If they think that I'm not necessarily telling the truth, they say, but well, I need to see the receipts. Um, and so I'm curious for you all, right? Uh, are there are there outcomes or specific stories, right? In which you've seen the way that we do this, uh, particularly thinking about empathy and balance and thinking, and right? Like, are there ways that students' lives has been impacted by your mentorship um, or the way that we do things in Sammy Soto and Idea? Do you want me to say it? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, like, I, I struggle with that question because I think there's no like silver bullet, like. 
mentor group experience that could be made into like a tear jerking this american life episode you know where it's like a perfect story um because it really is a marathon it's not a sprint and it's a four-year journey and there's so many people involved like most of the probably really important life-changing things that i've done for my mentees i've done with a team of other people at school uh, and probably don't even realize the the long-term impact but for the american life story I, i've got uh, a mentee that i think back at uh Sammy, his parents were first, they were immigrants, uh, didn't speak any English. Uh, nobody had gone to college before in his family. English language learner, so really struggled in school and it was just always trying to support him in his classes. I'm, I'm tearing up, <laughs> just think about how proud I am of him. And he's gone off to college and he's gotten his medical degree now. Um, and seeing that, like, that was his dream. <laughs> Promised myself I wouldn't do this. All right, um, but that he stayed in touch as well. Like he's proud of um, everything that we had together. He wanted to share it, and um, that makes me feel like our relationship was really important to him. If you told me Emily, you're going on stage with Johnny, which one of you is going to cry? <laughs> Nobody thinks it's going to be Johnny. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> um, I thought about this because I love. I live for the drama moment. Oh, I want. I want the stage and the glitz and the glitter and the like the fireworks and my husband's a financial planner which is very boring <laughs> and I'm a choir director which is shiny and he's he slows me down and teaches me long game and I hate slowing down and I hate long game but it is what we do and I thought about um a mentee at Sammy, who I'm gonna call Tom. That's not his name, but that's what I'm gonna call him. And I actually think he could be here with me throwing shade at him, he'd be okay. Um, but Tom was wicked smart and wicked lazy. <laughs> and he would do the bare minimum to get the best grades, which wasn't that hard for him. And he was uh, tough for me at first, actually pretty much the whole time. Um, and. And he would do, he was in my classes, he was in my mentor group, and he would kind of give me like the too cool for school face all the time when I'm just like, let's play a game and now a personality, then we're gonna, we're gonna discover ourselves and our strengths. And he was like, mm-hmm, okay. And I was like, no, but I'm gonna keep going after Tom. And, the, and I kept telling myself, you're the adult and you gotta, you gotta go after each one of them relentlessly, right? And, and like, here's another thing to learn from. Here's another thing to consider. You turned this homework in and you purposely made these two mistakes so that I won't level you up, but I know you did it on purpose. So your next assignment is harder. And he'd be like, oh, um, and be real annoyed with that. And so like, how did, like, I'm going to keep pushing you. I'm going to keep coming for you. I'm going to keep like smiling at you and welcoming you and giving you another chance to buy in. And he didn't give me any of it for four years. He gave me very little back. And like mentoring is hard. Mentoring is harder than teaching. And, and it is the work, like it is the work I am here to do and, and is why I work at these schools. Um, and his sophomore year of college, he started sending me stuff. Here's a podcast I think you'll like. And I listened to it and it's about like changing the world, connecting to people. Here's an article I thought you'd be interested in. Here's a, here's a musician that I've been kind of following that I think you'll be into and I'm like, uh, you were listening. <laughs> and so my suspicion is Tom is not the only one who it may be sunk in in a way that I didn't get to witness mm -hmm. that didn't necessarily feel rewarding in the moment for me because it isn't actually about me, but that the work I need to continue to do as a mentor is to continue to pour into kids who aren't necessarily going to give me what I want in that moment. And yet I'm going to have another chance for you. I'm going to have another push for you. I'm going to have another way to engage you. And I will never stop because I think it'll probably sink in or it won't. I don't get to know, but we're going to keep doing that work anyway. So that was, that helps me persevere. Yeah, I'm like, totally, the long game. <laughs> um, I'll just give a little glimpse into my week um, on the note of a student. So this afternoon at Sammy, I came back, today was our multicultural showcase at Wild Wonders at Point Defiant Zoo and Aquarium, which is where we have our assemblies, um, pretty special place to work. Um, and in the lobby or in the entrance of the ELC, the Environmental Learning Center, was one of our intern hosts. And I'm going to say her name, Sabrina. I'm just going to say it. I'm not going to do fake names here. Um, and I said, Sabrina, what? hi, 
what are you doing here? Because I see Sabrina in the community or an email because she's a host. Why is she at school? She doesn't work at school. And she's like, I'm here to see my intern. And I said, really? So this community member took time out of their paid schedule to come to school to, quote, see their intern who was in the multicultural showcase. And why this is a special like, thing for me is that Sabrina was in my class when she graduated from these schools 10 years ago, and now she's a host of this kid. So I'm, this kid is really wonderful and went through the intro class and did all this work, but just didn't know what he wanted to do and didn't know and didn't know and didn't know and wants to be a business, wants to be a doctor, wants to this and that. And I said, how about you just kind of do what I think you should do, <laughs> which is to work with Sabrina. And Sabrina works for Pierce County Council. She's an assistant to a politician. He happens to live in the district. We hook them up and I got an email last week invited to the Pierce County Council meeting where the student researched, wrote, and then read the proclamation at the actual meeting for the AA and HPI month in front of everybody, all the commissioners, it was on the Zoom, it was everywhere, and then was received, over the course of him reading, there was nobody in the chambers, and I'm just sitting there nervous for him, and I'm tearing up, because I'm so proud of him. He looks so good, and he's so composed. By the time I turn around, there are 50 Asian American leaders in the back, waiting for him to finish, to receive the proclamation. And it was just like, everything I'm trying to do. It, it is exactly, and that's just one story, but there's, a, there's 300 of them. And I only knew Sabrina, so I saw her. But that stuff goes on, and we don't always see it. But it's real. And the community wants to also mentor our students. The business folks, the professionals, the, edu the other educators, you, you, join us. I mean, all of you that are coming into these schools, it's not really a recruitment pitch, but, like, we need you. We need you to take somebody else's kid to your business to help us turn them into the citizen that Johnny's describing. And it, it, it was really special. And I was like a proud person in the front row, teared up as he was just so confident in his work. And then to see him performing on the stage this afternoon while she's just cheering him on as a teenager was just, uh, it was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. So, yeah. I, I want to pose one last question to you all, um, and I want to do it kind of in a bit of a, like a lightning round fashion. Um, I appreciate that you all have named, right, that this, this game is not uh, just a game of intensity. It's a game of consistency, right, that we play this over the long term, playing the long game, right, like waiting for things. And so to form, right, I know that you all are in service to students, but there's actually an impact that occurs on you as well. And so last two questions, right? Asking them in lightning round form. Um, one, how has being a, main, a mentor changed you as a teacher? And two, what are your hopes for your students as a mentor as they exit the respective place where you work? I'll just kick it off quick while y'all think for a second there. Um, I used to be a lot harder on kids. I was, I was a toughie. And I still can be, but I really try to be consistently not. Um, I, you know, my dad's a Marine. When I say how high, you know, jump how high, all that mess. And like, it just, that's what I thought I was my role as a leader and as a supporter and as a mentor. And the more I've built relationships with individuals, the students, the other staff, but it, it's not my job to tell them who to be. It, it just isn't. It is my job to support wherever you are, wherever that learner is, wherever they're going next. I'm like the grease, right? I'm the bridge. I'm not the one telling them they need to get off that and get over here. Like that's, and so that's been really influential for me. And so I think, again, I mentioned it before, but the confidence piece, I, I'm really, I don't want people to be scared when they leave school. The world's intense. It can get wild out there. I mean, we all see it. You mentioned the pandemic. I want them to feel like they've got some people in their court. And I want them then to email a couple years later and send podcast recommendations or whatever. But um, I, I think that's my main thing is that I'm much more patient, understanding. I'm an active listener and um, I care to follow up with each of the kid about what's going on. My work is part of it, but it's really what they need to do and accomplish. 
Uh, for me, it forces me to get out of my content. Um, and I think that uh, I was talking about like the job I want to have versus the work I want to do. And if I'm going to identify that the work I want to do is helping to build young people into confident, problem solving, collaborative, empathetic human beings, um, mentor group says to me, show me your receipts. Like choir is the ideal vehicle to do this. And like I can do like, like I know how to teach my content. And then but but if philosophically I go, I want to build humans, mentor group says, great, then we're going to give you humans and you do that work with the humans in the room, whether they do your same content or not. And, and that puts to the test w the work that I say that I do with young people. And that changes me. It continues to change me. Uh, for me, like I also have a similar background with working at summer camps and uh, college orientation stuff. And uh, what I loved about that, it was, yeah, not math and science. It was just like group development and leadership skills and interpersonal relationships. And I thought I was sacrificing that when I took a job at a traditional high school. I'd wanted to go like work in outdoor education instead, National Outdoor Leadership School or Outward Bound. Um, and it was such a pleasure to find an intergroup where I could continue to grow and expand those skills. So that's really, you know, how it's impacted me is I still get to pull out some of that academic content about how to be a leader and how to work with each other. Uh, so, so happy to still continue to grow in that area. Your second point about what I hope students uh, walk away with, it would probably be maybe some active modeling of this tonight, but it's okay to have feelings and it's okay to, uh, you know, acknowledge and talk through those. Um, and we just don't carve out sacred space to do that often enough in schools. I, I said this, but I want to rearticulate that I want inquire. Yeah. Your voice is important and other people's voices are there too. It's the same learning outcome. I want my mentees to go. Your voice matters. You are important. Speak. And it is not all about you. Notice <laughs> if they can walk away with those things, they're going to do something. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that is a great point um, for us to put cap on this. And, and I'll say the same thing. Right. Uh, you all could have been anywhere else in the world, but you've chosen yeah. on a Thursday night to spend this your time cool. with us. Very cool. um, so we're yeah. grateful that you all are here. Um, I want to say thank you to our panelists and for not only tonight, but, you know, for between you. Right. The 45 years worth of service that you've given to students. Um, we want to just say thank you to everyone for being present. And in order for you to get an A plus before this is over, uh, can we give a thunderous round of applause for Thank you. Thank you guys again. Um, these people are incredible. The work that they do with each of your children <clears throat> on a daily basis is just a, it's an act of love and of service and it's just incredible. So thank you. And they represent three out of um, almost a hundred teachers across our three schools. They get to spend every single day with your kids. So thank you guys so much. Um, give them one more round of applause. Um, so we intended wanted to keep this really short. I know it's really nice outside. We want to get you, give you the chance to meet each other, um, to meet some of the, the staff at the schools. Um, just real quick, I want to tell you a little bit about what you might not know about our organization. So um, we're part of Tacoma Public Schools. So does Sammy and Adia are all three high schools that exist in Tacoma, as you all well know. Um, but we also have a 501c3 called Elements of Education. And that's um, a nonprofit that works to support all of these great things we do at the schools. Um, some of the things that get to happen because of Elements of Education are our adjunct instructor program. We have um, this semester alone 37 individuals that are full-time professionals from graphic designers to engineers to biologists to jazz musicians that get to spend uh, one class period a day um, or a week coming in and working alongside a teacher of record um, to offer some real real world deep application of the learning that happens um, in, in our schools. Um, we do service and study tours, which for those of you that um, have been around for a long time, you know since the pandemic we haven't done them and we're starting them up again next year. We have students um, each year in January that go to Nepal, that go to China, that go to um, Africa. We had a group that went to um, the uh, uh, all of the national parks in the United States. So all of those service and study tours that happen for juniors and seniors happen because of our nonprofit and are all funded through that. Um, and we have scholarships that we fund so that we can make sure every student um, that, that completes the process is able to do that. Um, we have all these other additional programs. We just put on an incredible musical 
Um, Emily was um, kind of spearheaded the whole thing, the prom that just closed last weekend. Um, and a lot of that was funded through our nonprofit. So all of these um, great things that happen in our schools are a part of elements of education. Um, I think uh, Michael McGavick is here. He's the board president. So I just want to recognize him. Um, I think he's been with us since the very beginning of SOTA for almost 20 years now. So thank you for being here. And so you might be wondering, well, what's next? What do you need from us? Um, we would love to engage with you and figure out a way we can connect. So on your program, there's a QR code, and it's also right up here. You can scan it, um, and that just takes you to a website that gives you a number of ways you can connect. You can subscribe to our podcast on YouTube, on Apple Music, on Spotify. Um, it comes out every Wednesday morning, and we interview um, each one of our teachers every week. So you can get, stay up to date with the stories and all the stuff you heard tonight. Um, you can sign up for our newsletter. Um, where we will give you specific examples of ways you can participate and you can hear about the things that are happening across our schools. Um, or, and if you're able to, you can donate to help um, to any of the funds. When you click on the donate button, you'll see a number of funds you can choose and help donate to the robotics team or to the prom, the musical, or to the scholarship fund for service and study tours or a number of different things. So if you're able to, um, that's, an, that's an opportunity you have. Um, so that's a way we can help connect with you. And thank you for being part of this. Um, thank you for trusting us with your kids. Um, this is our first ever parent and family engagement night. Our next one that we've already put on the calendar is going to be September 27th in the fall. Um, so mark your calendars for that. We'd love to see you again. We're going to keep playing with the format and finding ways we can um, we can bring folks like you together to, to learn how we can all participate and be a part of public education. Um, now, thank you all for being here. If you have to go, it's totally fine. Um, thank you for coming. Um, we are going to split into groups. If you want to just uh, connect with some of the co-directors or some of the staff, meet some of the panelists. Um, if you're a SAMI parent, we're going to stay in here. If you're a SOTA parent, you can go out underneath the pavilion. And if you're an IDEA parent, you can go out um, by the, the couches kind of in the field. So um, find your people and have a great night. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.